good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to our first workshop of the conference with the theme of accelerating digital transformation and innovation in a remote only environment and for the workshop we have mr gorav jagavkar who is principal solutions architect and amazon internet services so without any further ado let's get this workshop started over to you gorav thank you thank you shivani uh, i hope i'm audible yes yes lovely good afternoon everybody hope you are having a good time uh, at home what we are going to discuss is how's this working from home affecting the way we perform business in today's world right uh, but let's get started by my own introduction uh, thanks shivani for the kind words uh, i work at aws uh, as a principal solutions architect and i work very closely with the startups in india and i also work with a lot of fintech companies so uh, the next slides that we are going to discuss is is more about what we've learned as aws as an organization the trends that we are seeing in india and uh, uh, what what our customers on aws are doing and where they are going uh, in in this uh, very very strange times right so let's get started um first is businesses don't stop uh the scenario outside is difficult i stay in mumbai uh you can't travel outside there are restrictions but businesses can't stop in fact businesses want to treat this as an opportunity to maximize the way digital uh india is going forward that's the mandate from the indian government that's the mandate for the fintech uh, and the startups that they have they are digital first right and the big question that we are trying to solve today is how do we enable the employees to work from home uh, it's it's the covid uh, 19 pandemic is causing multiple challenges to organizations around the world businesses need to maintain continuity as they ask their employees to work from home right and this sudden and unforeseen surge uh, uh, of remote workers this is not something that we had anticipated or any business had prepared for um, a lot of our customers didn't even have laptops for all the employees but how do you enable to Uh, enable the workers the employees to work remotely in such an environment you can't have the work stop and that's what we are going to discuss today uh, as uh, as to what aws brings to the table and what are the options available uh, to keep our business rolling right um the work in any ways was changing for a longer period of time the globalization of the economy uh, has has driven the need for you to uh, collaborate with people in different time zones different geographies and uh, there are interactions over phone or video or voice channels uh, and the work keeps happening if at all if anything is changed uh, and i'm speaking for myself and everybody that i've spoken for us with is the number of hours that we are putting in terms of work our day starts at 8:39 and just goes on right because there is no 6 o'clock go home uh, for us so the questions uh, and the discussions that i i generally get into uh, involves a lot of people asking me how do i enable my my workers my employees my colleagues to to work effectively from home how do you enable my customers to get things done without leaving the confines of my uh, of their own houses right um the allied businesses the businesses like the contact centers if you have any how do they operate they are a regulated industry everything happens in an audited form everything is recorded how is the supervision happening how is the audio quality maintained how is the entire setup secure uh, when working from home and and security is is extremely vital right uh, when we are talking about this people are in their own place how do you enable the data that is proprietary you are the custodians of uh, the end users data how does that remain secure even when my employees my customers are working from remote locations are there ways and means to do that let's let's dive into fintech specifically and what does aws have to do with them in any case right aws has been uh, working with fintech organizations for a long time now and there are specific reasons why aws comes into play aws provides tools like aws artifact and aws artifact gives you all the compliances at an infrastructure level here you don't have to take care of uh, when you're on the cloud uh, like aws you don't have to take care of the physical security of your infrastructure and the audits which happen from third party regulated auditors are are available to you at the click of the button 
So that reduces the amount of undifferentiated heavy lifting that fintech startups are in uh, are doing today, right? So you focus uh, on on business and business alone because. Now technology is democratized to everybody. You're, uh, you, you, it is not only the privilege of enterprises alone uh, in today's world, right? Um, so you can keep your data encrypted at rest without ne even knowing uh, or learning the security and encryption protocols. It's just a click of the button for you. Um, and you can use the latest and greatest of technologies. You can use containers, you can use caches, you can use AIML just as APIs. And that's what is enabling businesses. The other part is also cost, right? If you've got a finite set of money, you'd rather invest that in terms of features to your uh, to your fintech, in terms of uh, what you give to your end customers as capabilities, right? And which is why it is extremely important to reduce your infrastructure spend and to have it right size. You're not going to say no to business. When there's a huge spike in business, you want the infrastructure to scale out. But when there are downtimes, when there is, uh, uh, when the market's closed, you want that infrastructure to be a bare minimum uh, to support the uh, number of users. That's where AWS has a huge role to play. And no wonder a lot of global uh, financial companies are uh, fintechs are on AWS. Um, and, and this does not just include uh, startups, which are formed in a few years back, right? Even companies like, let's take the example of Travelex. I think Travelex was formed in 1976 and they're doing newer innovations. Their uh, new, new product called as Travelex Wire is for digital payments across nations. It's completely built on AWS. Now, what that gives them is the agility and the scale uh, for, for their business operation. And it's not just these ones, there's so many more. In fact, 100% of the 2019 Forbes FinTech startups were on AWS. You know, uh, large customers weren't that threatened by these startups previously. Now, we've got customers like Robinhood. Now, Robinhood's got about 4 million customers and they do commission free trading. And now they become the trendsetters in the industry where, where organizations like JP Morgan follow the suite. And that's what uh, fintechs uh, are about, right? The disruption that you bring into play. And disruption in these times is even more wide. Um, let me bring the whole story much closer to home. Uh, various companies in India, and, and I'm sure you know most of these brands, these are extremely popular brands. These are our referenceable customers on AWS. So companies like Zeroda, whose use case we'll be discussing later, um, Policy Bazaar using Poly and uh, natural speech for uh, having communication with customers or fintech and payment organizations like tech process if you've made any credit card payment you definitely come across those guys are, are are based on aws let's take the case of uh, the largest uh, uh, due diligence company based out of india right um, so zeroda is a digital uh, due diligence company it takes uh, it does financial checks against regulatory requirements for financial service uh, services company for others, right? For the counterparties. Uh, and it does that with about 700 uh, sources of information available with the government as well as the public sector, right? And that's no mean feat. But how do you do that in real time? How do you actually bring down the cost? Companies like Zero are redefining the way technology is implemented. Here, they're using technologies which are completely serverless, so they don't have a huge infrastructure footprint when nothing's happening. But when required, they can go to from zero to 100 in a matter of seconds. And that's the value that we are, we are bringing into fintechs uh, today. Also, these times uh, are, are extremely important in, in various aspects. There's a definite, definite need to make sure that the data is secure, right? You've seen uh, apps like Arogya Setu and, and the amount of discussion where personal data uh, that is maintained on application remains secure and not accessible. So security is a day zero job when, when we are talking about uh, AWS. Security at uh, AWS starts with our core infrastructure. The infrastructure is custom built for the cloud and designed to meet the most stringent security uh, requirements in the world. Our infrastructure is actually physically monitored 24 by 7 to help uh, ensure the entire confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your data. In fact, we've got SLAs for that, uh, for the services that you use. Uh, 
Uh, you can rely on AWS's global infrastructure. You can you can have multi-region deployments, knowing that you are always in control where the data resides. It's your decision at the end of the day, right? And when the data is in the cloud, it doesn't matter whether you are in the office or whether you are at home, right? The second part is the scalability. Scalability in terms of your business and scalability in terms of onboarding your own employees to access the services whether it is over a VPN connection or whether it is about remote desktop environments that you can have for them to work or just critical applications. You can onboard tens of thousands of employees in response to normal business cycles or even unplanned events, right? We've got applications with the government regulation coming on, on international applications being banned. Some startups within India had a huge surge in requirement and where better were they uh, rather than India, AWS to scale up their uh, operations just overnight. The other part is, of course, the cost. There's no predictability of the business that we have. Today. Cost becomes an extremely important factor, especially when you have to conserve money so that you invest in innovation. And that's where you want to take care of. So AWS brings in so many features for startups and fintechs, right? There are so many programs where you get AWS credits, and there are so many levers that you yourself can operate on to reduce the cost of your spend. The other fun fact about AWS is that we repeatedly reduce the cost of our infrastructure year on year, year on year. So you get the latest and greatest of the infrastructure at a reduced cost from the previous generation. The other part is specific applications that, that you require to work from home, right? So there's, there's something called as workspaces, something that I actively use. These are remote desktop environments that you can spin off for your own organization. For if you are the uh, infrastructure team within the organization, all you have to do is go through a couple of clicks and a wizard to spin up remote desktops and give it to the Active Directory users or independent users in your application, uh, in your organization. You can create these applications either in Linux or you could uh, go all the way and create those standard Windows platform. Again, the amount of disk space that you give, the amount of uh, CPUs that you give are completely alterable and you can vary them with people. Sometimes you don't have the need to give the entire um, uh, workspace for your uh, end users, right? You just need a few critical applications which need to be accessed securely. In such cases, you're okay with them using their own desktop or laptop at home, apart from a, a particular set of applications which are in-house. And that's where AppStream comes into play. You can give those specific applications which are installable uh, in, in your environment for, a, uh, for access. So AppStream is a fully managed application and a streaming service for your uh, organization to leverage. And you can easily scale your application streaming to any number of users across the globe without, uh, without acquiring, provisioning, licensing, uh, and operating hardware or infrastructure. It's a couple of clicks and, and you go. Of course, you've got these traditional file sharing uh, environments as well. But if you look at WorkDocs, and, and if time permits, we'll get into a demo on WorkDocs uh, to see how easy it is uh, to, to collaborate in terms of document share. In fact, even onboarding your existing documents onto WorkDocs is extremely easy because you can do that at scale. The other part that WorkDocs brings to table is the API-based connectivity to your uh, documents. So you can not only do that using uh, installed clients on your machines, browser, but also integrate it with your own code with, with APIs. Um, one of the better kept secrets within Amazon, and that that's, was something funny that was going on Twitter uh, a, a few days back, uh, that AWS has uh, the secret is Amazon Chai. It's a collaboration tool. Bulk of my day, in fact, nowadays uh, is spent on Chime. You know, you can do video chats, you can have audio conversations, or you can just exchange messages, which are completely secure and restricted to your corporate uh, zones itself, uh, so that the employees can interact with each other. Besides, you can then go ahead and invite your customers for a meeting and have a video conference with either party sharing the screen. And that makes it so much more easier when you're doing your office work, right, in today's environment. Uh, never again, before we had imagined that we would have used our, our uh, video conferencing so much. Uh, and Chime's been one of the better tools that we've used uh, in the recent times. Let's go to Amazon Connect. Um, if you've ever uh, worked in setting up 
uh, a call center environment, a place where phone calls are received or mailed. It's an extremely tech intense process, right? But we've got Amazon Connect, which actually lets you set up the entire call center within minutes through a, a, a wizard. So it enables businesses to have a fully operated contact center and it can be operated out of anywhere. And we'll, we'll talk about a couple of examples on this uh, uh, as, as we go, right? Uh, we, we had a company called as Gain Credit based out of the UK and Gain, Gain Credit offers uh, credit lending to the people who would have been typically less eligible. Now they have a contact center based out of Gurgaon and their technology was slightly old. The ability to monitor uh, the calls and audit them and keep a record of them was, was getting more and more difficult. Secondly, so which is where uh, Amazon Connect came into being. They implemented that the phase one has gone live. Now they have the ability to not only use that, but also get the recordings, which they transcribe, they can get sentiment on, uh, et cetera, when, when it comes to that. Just give me one second. Okay, my display had gone off. And um, then, then let's take about, uh, talk about Amazon Client VPN. You need to establish a VPN connectivity between, so that there is a secure tunnel of communication between your employees' laptops or desktops at home and the uh, intranet that you have in the office, right? And you don't want to expose certain set of data over, over the internet. That's where AWS's uh, client VPN comes into play. Client VPN establishes that secure tunnel. Now, if you've ever set up VPN, you'd know how difficult it is to maintain a VPN server for multi-thousand customers. How, how do you do a fully managed pay-as-you-go VPN service? The service also needs to be uh, essentially elastic, right? It should be able to scale in and out as per the demand at any given point in time. And that's what uh, client VPN from AWS gives you as a service. These are the ones which we've actually seen a lot of usage increase over uh, the period of time, right? Like we've got companies like Matchmove, uh, it, it's using uh, workspaces today to onboard new employees. If you're finding it difficult to give new laptops to your uh, employees in remote areas, uh, workspace is something that you'd leverage. So there are lots of companies who are doing this uh, today. And let's let's focus further into what, what the macro trends are uh, in, in these times. Once, of course, uh, standard thing, payment. The regulatory body is, is pushing towards a digital payment economy and even more so. Even today, I, don't, I would rather not handle cash and exchange notes uh, with contaminated services, right? Digital payments is, is going to be mainstream. And everybody today has a smartphone. In fact, there is a statistic that uh, by 2019, 39% of population had smartphones, not just phones, in one of the largest populated countries in the world, right? And that's no mean feat. Uh, so payments is here to stay and there are so many payments based organizations that, that are leveraging AWS for, for various reasons. What we've done about it is we've created a ready to spin up PCI ready set of infrastructure layout. And we'll, we'll talk slightly more about that. But what are the various services uh, that are involved when you're talking about the payments industry? One is the basic compute. You've got a virtual machine. And as the demand increases during the day or it, in, a, in a planned or an unplanned manner, you'd want that to scale in and scale out uh, for your business needs. And that's what EC2 brings into play. Uh, EC2 is Elastic Compute Cloud, uh, the basic uh, tenet of compute, a virtual machine, if you may, uh, for, for spinning up your application. You go in Linux, you go in uh, Windows, and you've got compute ready with you. How do you add more compute cores to your application? You just have something called as auto scaling behind a load balancer. So if your demand increases, if your CPU utilization increases, or if your memory increases, you just automatically have more servers getting plugged into your load balancers. And not, do you, not only do you scale out, but when the demand decreases correspondingly, the number of services automatically get terminated. And that is absolutely great because here you're not doing a five-year planning of your infrastructure of what, uh, what it would look like when there is a search and you are not keeping idle machines. You're going with the current demand. And with the current spiky nature of uh, business, it's, it's absolutely great to have, to have the ability to scale up with your demand and the ability to scale in when, when the times are, uh, are tougher, 
right? Or or during the low times in the day when there is not as much demand. Then there is of course the storage layer and uh, and the whole Hadoop ecosystem on that. S3 is designed for 11 lines of durability and it costs absolutely small. It costs two and a half cents per uh, per GB per month, right? And and you can have AES 256 bit encryption uh, storage at rest. Plus, th and that's unstructured storage. If you're talking about the warehouse level, terabyte, petabyte level storage, there's Redshift at the other end of the spectrum, and the Hadoop ecosystem called as Elastic Map Reduce or Amazon EMR for short. Uh, for you to use, and then there are various ways you can do uh, compute. Right, you can go the infrastructure as code, or you could create code as the atomic level where you don't have to manage servers. And somewhere in between of this, uh, between in the spectrum, is are things like containers, your Docker-based containers, your Kubernetes-based ecosystem that come into play, all available with PWS. So, whichever way you look at uh, your technology. Uh, the way you look at AWS is a set of building blocks. The building blocks help you assemble your business need without doing the heavy lifting for you. Let's talk about AI and ML, right? AI and ML with an AWS ecosystem works at multiple levels. One, we give you the hardware that you need if you've got the data scientists and can do all all the uh, the the jugglery with neural networks, right? I don't understand that. They are very well qualified to do that. What they need at this point in time is GPU units. We've got a tie-up with NVIDIA and provide elastic GPU units or dedicated uh, GPU units for for their compute. And we've got machine images which have got everything that they need right uh, in the menu pre-installed. So they've got uh, Torch, they've got uh, TensorFlow, and they've got Cafe. Uh, all of that pre-installed in a machine image that comes on top of these GPU-based setups. In the middle layer, we've got something called a SageMaker, a proper studio setup for for your machine learning uh, experts in the organization. Everything from Jupyter Notebook to auto scaling deployments of their models uh, come comes with SageMaker. And then for the developers like me, there are API endpoints. API endpoints for image recognition, text recognition, uh, text to speech, speech to text, um, chat bots, uh, then OCR. All of that is possible by invocation of APIs, and we'll talk about how other companies are leveraging all these, uh, even within the Indian market ecosystem, right? So lots, lots more uh, in this space for for uh, payments industry when we're talking about payments. The PCI DSS setup, right? All you have to do is double click on a template, which spins up your entire infrastructure that you're able to see. Within the AWS account, you create a virtual private cloud for yourself. You create multiple subnets, all of them extremely secure because they've got a stateful firewall and they've got a stateless firewall as well, called as NACL, a network access control list. All of this, uh, including the password policies, are, are PCI DSS compliant. Then all you go ahead and do is spin up your instances uh, within, within this ecosystem. So your entire data center, without having to spend a dime, is ready with a double click. How cool is that, right? Um, let's take the case of Razorpay. Razorpay, of course, you know, is is a payment gateway, and it's it's migrated as soon as the uh, data centers or the region was launched in in India. Uh, they migrated with a downtime of four minutes to AWS, and that's that's how they've been scaling. And uh, their business has been seeing a huge spike, right? Uh, their, their latencies have come down and they, they are going from success to success. That's with the payment industry. Now let's look at something else, right? We'll, we'll talk about two or three major factors within, within the FinTech ecosystem. Let's look at lending, right? Bank account penetration is now reached to 85% and is growing uh, from strength to strength. There are new tools uh, required here. Uh, for loan origination system, new ways of looking at how the business is transacted because the fintechs are disrupting. There's a huge pay by uh, play by uh, AI ML uh, that is happening. Analytics are no longer uh, running as day end batches. They're happening in absolute real time as we go ahead and, and uh, exploit what is uh, the art of possible. Let's take the case of pay you uh, when, when we are talking about uh, this, right? PayU is an organization which is based out of 16 countries. 
and it's one of the top three payment gateways uh, within India. PayU later had a merger with Citrus Pay, making the entire tech ecosystem extremely complex. Now, what they do is today they use uh, technologies like Redshift, which is a petabyte scaled um, vertical data warehousing solution to do their uh, entire reconciliation on a uh, day-to-day basis. That's, that's the value that it brings uh, to the table, right? Now they're able to scale from the user base that they previously had to about 50 million customers uh, as of today and going from strength to strength. So the whole cost effective nature, the whole dynamism that AWS brings into play is critical in, in the FinTech industry and as, as a whole. Even in today's times, when, when this industry is saying so much in terms of uh, usage, it's, it's essential that you scale up to your customer's needs and you scale up in that fashion, right? And what about capital markets? People, people are doing a lot more work uh, in the capital markets. Again, uh, scaling up uh, from, from strength to strength. Let's, let's talk about the use case here. Uh, if, if you're aware of Zerodha, Zerodha is the largest um, uh, trading stock broker in India if you measure it by uh, the number of active customers. Now, they were doing post-trade processing. And the post-trade processing typically in fact, a lot after the event has actually uh, gone past, you realize that uh, uh, there's a there's lot more to be done and your batch processes typically run for a longer duration. How do you go about and address that? So Zero that took, took a different take on the entire uh, world, right? What they did is that they made the entire ecosystem serverless. They went ahead with architectures which are new age. They went serverless. Now let me uh, explain what serverless ecosystem brings to you. You typically have a piece of code which requires a server running on it, uh, running that. So if you if you are a Java developer, you would write a Java piece of code. Then you would need a, a Java server on that, right? You use Tomcat, WebSphere, WebLogic, something of that sort. On top of that, you will need an operating system, which is where you go to Red Hat Linux. You go into um, uh, anything, Unix, Windows as a running environment. And finally, you also have to think about the hardware. You have to think about the number of CPUs you're going to utilize. Um, what's the CPU to memory configuration? And all of that becomes your responsibility as soon as you spin it up. So though your end payload is a piece of code that adds value to your business, you're supposed to take care of the entire ecosystem. You're supposed to take care of the uh, security, patching, the antivirus, uh, the network throughput, uh, make sure that the utilization is right. What if, and consider this hypothetical, you wrote a piece of code and say, hey, AWS, just run it for me. If one person calls and invokes this piece of code, run it for that person. If a million people call that same piece of code at the same time, run it for a million people. I don't want to take care of the servers, their patching uh, and all that. Is that, a pos is that something possible? So that I let my developers focus on what matters to my business and my business alone. And that's what the serverless ecosystem brings to play uh, for, for your work, right? You write a piece of code in your favorite programming language, say Python, Java, Node.js, uh, Golang, uh, and so many more, .NET Core, if you will. Uh, write that code, upload it, and say, hey, run it for me. And you can expose that code as APIs as well using an API gate. So, so many possibilities for you to use when you're using uh, uh, AWS as an ecosystem. Similarly, that's what Zero that did, right? They brought down their entire um, batch processing from, from hours of which it used to run for six to 10 hours to about two to three minutes uh, after uh, running into serverless. And we'll also talk about uh, the regulatory needs, right? Um, the times are changing. The regulations are extremely dynamic. They're now forward-based, right? And each of them have created uh, a, a regulatory uh, note for, for each industry, right? Things like drone, where there were uh, drone insurance, like working group to explore insurance standards has been created, right? It was, it was announced recently. Um, EKYC, so IDA has allowed the carriers to 
be okay with KYC via Aadhaar e KYC facility. What does that bring to the table for you? How do you leverage that? You've got tens and thousands of documents uh, in, in your ecosystem. How are they being processed? Are they being manually scanned today? If they are manually scanned, how is the data entry happening on that? How are you verifying those documents uh, when when you don't have the ability to to reach out to the customers, meet them in person, and make a note? Is it possible to do for you to do video KYC? And this is the art of possible, right? Is it possible for you to verify your uh, Aadhaar documents, PAN documents without having somebody to do uh, a, a check? Can can the data from the scanned or photocopied documents be automatically identified and uh, entered within the ecosystem? And that's the art of possible uh, that you do. How would you do that using uh, AWS? There are APIs for all of this, like OCR. There is a service called as TextTrack, which reads uh, data from text. and can do that for large documents or you can do image recognition for smaller pieces of uh, information like everything from uh, a vehicle's number plate all the way to your aadhar card your pan card if you're storing data now once you have that uh, you you also get the coordinates uh, of of the critical pieces of information right and then you can use your libraries of code to mask those documents so video kyc is a possibility uh aadhar masking because you want to mask only a part of the data or the entire aadhar number but you want to say that my document has been verified all these are in the possibility uh for you to implement and implement them quickly because you don't need data scientists to 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 do a uh, um, image recognition algorithm for you they are available to you as apis um interestingly uh irda also in, announced uh, very recently on the 26th of june Uh, a standard covid-19 cover if you are uh, aware of that right from june 15th uh, for all general and health insurance they have to provide a, a policy or a product which provides cover from 50000 all the way to 5 lakh uh, for for you to uh, avail of covid-19 facilities and and reimburse that typically it takes months if not years to launch a product in the industry how are you going to be nimble if you are in this space with the changing regulations is is the question to be asked uh, in today's world right let's take the case of policy bazaar and how how it has responded right and there's a lot of work that was done by policy bazaar right uh, policy bazaar as you know is is an online way of uh, getting your uh, insurers and uh, uh, you know everything comparing insurance etc etc so what what policy bazaar does is that there's a lot of outreach and inbound calls over the phone it's not just over uh, over the uh, browser and a computer so voice based broadcasting is something that they have done voice based personalized call so instead of saying um, excuse me potential customers a few of your documents are pending without giving the specifics which is a pre recorded message now they are able to customize the exact speech for the exact customer so there's there's an automated voice based outbound call that goes today and tells hey customer these specific documents from you are supposed to be uploaded to our portal here rather than a pre recorded message and now how does that happen um, they have a system uh, for uh, for their voice based broadcasting they have introduced a text to speech engine called as poly in their uh, in, in their calling application so what poly does is and poly provides uh, indian english as an option right so you don't speak with a foreign accent you speak in naturally understandable indian accent when you are communicating with your customer so much so that you can add um, tenor to the voice you can have background breathing to the voice that's how natural sounding it is and it has seen uh, a huge amount of success right 80% of the calls were made using these uh, the, the uh, poly as, as a technology and a large number in fact 40% of the sales closures were actually achieved without having to involve sales agents in the entire ecosystem and, and isn't that cool so what can you do and how can you leverage aws if that's the question that you have um there are various mechanisms we we've, we've got programs like aws activate for uh, startups where you can engage with us this provides you with credits and also the interaction 
um, drop in a mail to contact us uh, from our side and we'll we'll discuss so many more other options that you have there are, there are free trainings available if you go into the aws website and i'll provide a few links later on uh, if you look for them uh, for if you have time uh, if you're saving time during travel uh, in in these days why not invest in learning more skills and there are lots of them available from aws side today um, and and there's so many more, more people you can interact with there are there are the account managers and uh, business development representatives whom you can reach out to uh, me the solution architect and and uh, there there are a few of us in the ecosystem help you in the architecture journey of of your organization we help we act as sounding board and we are genuinely interested in making your applications uh, secure resilient highly available performant and cost effective as well as operationalized so that you don't have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the night uh, to solve problems especially if it involves just restarting uh, the machine right you can do so much more automation uh, with aws in play so uh, uh, you get please reach out to us and let us give you a, have a chance to help you out in, in this right um, on the compliance side uh, there are so many guidebooks uh, for a regulated industry that we provide today so this is uh, one of them uh, a few links that we provide right there is a compliance center specifically made for india and if, even if you look for these exact terms you will get to pdfs and uh, white papers that we have created uh, for for uh, for you to be utilized right how do you uh, create pci dss uh, specific applications compliant applications how do you how do you take care of the regulations that are specific to india uh when you're talking to your customers and regulatory bodies so that you make sure that you are well within the realms of the uh, uh, ecosystem let's let's go into a quick demo from here right um and uh add a few options to think about of of what i could show you but what i thought is why not go into workspaces uh something that's not typically demonstrated uh, when we are talking about aws right um so this is my aws console this is um, you know all those services if you typically need a the server to be launched you typically would go to ec2 configure a server uh, and uh, launch it i i hope you've got an a chance but let me walk you through a wizard without launching a standard server this is how a server side ecosystem plays right um you choose the operating system uh, there's free tiers eligible for everything that you have right um uh, all the services and you could spin up machines uh, within that uh, as well so let's go let's spin up a linux machine and there you go and there you get to choose from a lot of sizes uh, right from one vcpu and half a gb ram all the way to extremely large machines which can host sap based applications so the the choices are unparalleled with any other cloud provider right um you let's let's go in for one vcpu and one gb ram with with block storage then you choose and and this is where security comes into play you choose your virtual uh, virtual private cloud you choose a subnet where you want to launch a machine into and uh you also give ip addresses or you get them uh auto assigned then you add disks to your uh, instance and this is the root volume that you can see and then you can increase the size to whatever number of gps right and these get pre mounted then you can label your uh, instance saying name demo then give which ports are going to be accessible by default you can have only port 22 accessible you can have pre-created uh, access groups and security groups which are stateful firewalls for you and then finally go ahead and launch the entire instance and it should um, be up and running within a few minutes i'm not going to go ahead and and uh, show you how it launched or how do you do uh, ssh or or how do you use putty on that that's standard practice but that's how easy it is to spin up servers but what about what about uh, sharing documents let's go to workspaces right 
all that you do uh, when you're creating workspaces as an administrator there'll be two personas here as an administrator you go ahead and launch a workspace uh, and create workspaces and that's what i use uh, for remote access for uh, my my applications and my office stuff as well so here i add the number of users let me show you all the users let's take me add selected for this i've gone to workspaces i've chosen a directory a collection of users and a set of machines uh, within that i have given uh, gorov as the user who can uh, access a particular workspace here is where you see a lot of options in terms of what type of a machine do you want to give that particular individual right um, a power user can have an 8v cpu or a 32 gb ram machine but if your if your objective is to access only a few applications and browser you might as well give a machine which is just windows 10 and it is available uh, where you can avail the free tier uh, as well next step uh, everything needs to be encrypted here okay and name your demo workspace next step okay looks all good and i can launch a workspace now when i launch a workspace how do i access it this will take some time um okay i have already got a workspace for myself this will take time and for you to access uh, these workspaces there is a workspaces client available for uh, all your operating systems uh, linux windows uh, as well as chromebooks is even if you're using a browser you can access your remote uh, environment uh, using using your uh, browser itself and that's how easy it is for your organization to give your newly joined uh, employees or your existing employees access to your corporate data center or your internet network um how about document sharing let's go there for a moment you have a service called as work docs where you generally go ahead and create a work docs space for yourself so i've created a work docs site called as demo in this and you can just click here just like the previous things it will drive you through a wizard and in fact there are options where you can hook it up to your existing uh, active directory when when you are talking about it however once you go there you share this link to your employees who are uh, available to access this this is uh, this links available on the internet and uh, i've already logged in but you then they go ahead and log in to the entire work doc site which is which is for your organization and your organization alone right um hopefully my password is correct i have no recollection of the password And there you go if you want to upload documents just upload a file or a folder and there you will have options to upload things um if you want to collaborate that's a great option here as well you can leave comments on uh on the side saying this is how the document is and uh you can you can of course download those documents request approvals from other people uh and and share them uh, over and over again with your colleagues and keep them still within the ecosystem right um essentially what what i'd uploaded for this is is a document on the trainings that are available uh, on aws please do have a look at this uh, this pdf is available over uh, the internet as well just look up for uh, aws free trainings and it will help you get started in fact uh, the aws.amazon.com has a great place called as getting started for you to get off the blocks very quickly um cloud is going to be the future uh, from now onwards Uh, and and it always uh, helps to have that skill up your armor to proceed and and make your career a much more successful one with that um thanks for your time uh, and before we close um, let's have a quick session on question and answers if there are any specific ones uh or to you shivani uh, any uh, questions that we have yes uh, so gora we have few questions technical questions mm -hmm. so if you are comfortable we can take it up Yes, let's do that. 
Okay, cool. Uh, so first question that we have is how can AWS help me with plug and play application development without mm-hmm. coding? Please elaborate on the tools available. Oh, absolutely. That's a fantastic question, right? Um, low code applications are going to be available and AWS has launched a service. Let, let me uh, actually give me one second and um, Okay. Just give me one second. So very recently, and which is why I don't remember the uh, uh, the name of the application. It's Honeycode. Uh, is a platform for low code. Have a look at this uh, honey code where, where you can actually start creating your application. There's a fantastic getting started guide on honey code AWS for getting started. Where you can create the front end and back end applications without writing any code. Uh, in fact, uh, to keep yourself up to date, do follow uh, the blog uh, by Jeff Barr and he keeps coming up with what's new on AWS. So. Have a look at this. Uh, it it uh, the blog itself tells you how to start creating mobile applications for yourself with just drag and drop. But that's not it, right? Low code is one end of the spectrum. How about creating applications rapidly? How how do I integrate my existing uh, Angular based or React based application with the backend that is provided by AWS? And how do I do that securely? How do I invoke the APIs from that? There's a service called as AWS Amplify, which you can use uh, to get those integrations done. Again, phenomenally well documented and tells you how to get started. In fact, if you're a front-end developer uh, who wants to use uh, the server-side ecosystem for persistence or browser-side storage, or even create GraphQL-based interactions, uh, try try and use uh, AWS Amplify. So... Uh, to, to go towards lower pieces of code, use go ahead and uh, use Honey uh, Honeycode Amazon Honeycode, which is launched on the 24th of June, very recently. Uh, use AWS Amplify, and Amplify also has got a, a command line interface for you to create applications absolutely rapidly. Also, uh, if you're if you're starting on your entire journey of programming and you're still at the beginner spectrum, uh, all the IDs like VS Code have plugins from AWS where you can start writing code and right click and deploy them directly onto the cloud. So without even visiting the console, once you've set it up correctly, um, you can uh, go onto AWS. Hope that answers your question. Okay, so we do have another question. Uh, How can AWS help me uh, with implementing uh, digital ledger technology if we want to develop a solution for banking via blockchain? Okay. So Amazon quantum ledger is something that I wanted to say. And and the reason why I am uh, going on the internet to show you is to show you how easily this information is available at your fingertips, right? So Amazon's got something called as QLDB. Uh, So if you're uh, anywhere in implementing these ledger-based or blockchain-based technologies, uh, there is uh, available service right out of the box for you uh, without having to set up an entirely massive uh, infrastructure for that. And AWS Quantum Ledger supports uh, Hyperledger Fabric and Ethereum uh, for Ledger. So that makes it much, much easier uh, for you to get started off the blocks on, on blockchain uh, technologies. Uh, this was introduced somewhere late last year and has gone GA recently as well. Shivani, if you could get me the uh, name of the person who's asking the question, I can I can speak to them directly as well, right? Okay, so we'll ask them to sh- uh, drop their name as well. So yes. I can share the names and the contact details with you offline, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Gaurav, for this amazing session, for uh, this enriching session. I now... It was a pleasure. I'd also like to thank AWS for partnering with us for this amazing workshop. 
Mm-hmm. Now we'll uh, just take a small break for 10 minutes and we'll be back for the next workshop. I'd request everyone to visit our exhibition booth, check out their offering to and to rake up points which can help you win exciting prizes. You can also check uh, your standing on the leaderboard on the platform. Stay tuned, tuned. We'll be right back and thank you once again Gaurav, thank you. Thank you Shivani. Thank you everyone. It was a pleasure talking to you all of you. Stay safe, stay well, take care of yourselves. Bye. Thank you. Bye.